So after last week when Disney released two episodes of The Bad Batch for May the 4th, this week where they're going back down to one episode per week, which is really kind of the right way to do it. And I must say that this episode right here, episode three of The Bad Batch, was way more up my alley. Things actually happened. There was interesting developments. There was teases for the future. Like, this to me is really... What makes this episode great, there was two main plots of this episode. Two main plots. One was the fact that the group wound up being stranded on this moon. And Omega had to be the one to save the day. And so by the end of the episode, Omega got a uh, her own room. Which, it's not really a huge deal, but it was another example of them really kind of putting the focus back on Omega. And I wonder if she's going to become a character. I mean, I have a feeling... That Omega will be a character, maybe not all of the Bad Batch, but I think Omega will be a character specifically that will return in the future. And I mean, when I say in the future, I'm talking about like Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett type of future. Like, I don't see this character, I thought last review that maybe she might die in this show, but if the rest of the Bad Batch die, I could see Omega surviving into later, where at that point you could have... Like, you know, her help out Ahsoka Tano or help out the Mandalorian or whoever, maybe in the future, you know, in the Filoni verse. But uh, because they're really putting a lot of a lot of focus on Omega. But what made this episode really interesting was that we're literally witnessing the building of the Empire in front of our very eyes. This continued the plot from episode one where Governor Tarkin, Grand Moff Tarkin, wants to replace the clones with more effective soldiers. And in this episode, he brings about a squadron of humans, not clones, or at least, you know, whatever they're called, like non-cloned, you know, humanoids, I guess you can call them, to essentially be, um, to be trained by clones to eventually, um you know, take over. Like, we're literally witnessing it. And they introduced Admiral Rampart. And I'm wondering if now, because the way they made this episode feel, it was almost as if they were taking Tarkin out. Almost like Tarkin will not be a major factor in this show. Maybe he'll make a couple of appearances, but it felt like Admiral Rampart was going to end up being the... I guess you could say the Thrawn of this show, where he'll end up being the primary antagonist. And the whole story talks about how there's just regular people, like not clones, but these, you know, well-trained soldiers joining the Empire, which of course would later become Imperial Stormtroopers. So I'm wondering if this show, I have questions here, and this is a good thing. I'm wondering if this show is going to uh, explore, like actually show, the end of the clones. Because, you know, they had a line in the episode, a scene where the Camino cloners were concerned about losing their contract, so basically. And they're setting up a plot where it looks like they want to get a hold of one of the Bad Batch because Jango Fett is dead. And unless they're teasing Boba Fett, which I don't think they are, they want to get a hold of one of the Bad Batch in order to get his DNA to clone him or her whomever, maybe Omega, and then eventually create, you know, like a new breed of clone trooper. And we could end up seeing an episode where it's the clones against the stormtroopers. I mean, that could be the finale here. And I would be perfectly fine with that, let me tell you. Perfectly fine with that. You know, I wonder if they are going to tease like the sequel trilogy stuff where they were able to clone Palpatine. I don't know about that, but I wonder if they will. But interestingly enough, you know, Crosshair being the villain of this new team is a good setup. And, you know, they had this thing in the episode where they went back to Saul Guerrero's group and this time he showed his effectiveness. You know, he has that line from the first episode where he's like, you know, a soldier must obey orders. And He winds up killing the civilians, which was dark. I mean, this was a dark episode. And 
Crosshair is a very, very bad villain. And in the episode, Omega even talks about how, you know, you can't be mad at him. He's just doing what he's told. It's not his fault. It's the chip. And it's like, man, this guy's a prick. I don't buy that. I buy that Crosshair is a prick, yo. Because they were civilians there. Saul Guerrero was gone. And he still killed them. Like, I don't know, man. I don't really see how this is going to make him a sympathetic character. I, I just don't see how that's possible. The episode really had a sense of dread to it. It was a darker episode. Really, I enjoyed it so much more than episode two. I've noticed with a lot of these shows that the first episode's a banger, and then either the second or third episode will be kind of weak, and then they'll come back with a good one. I've noticed that. Not all the time, but I've noticed that pattern. I don't know why that is. But, uh, once again, they kind of focused again on the family aspect of the Bad Batch because while Omega may have been seen as somewhat of a nuisance early on, she is starting to be ad adopted fully for the clones and they're taking care of Omega. And it's one of those things where obviously they lost Crosshair and they still miss him. I mean, he's discussing the episode. Hunter, you know, does not like the fact they're they're all you know they're all opposite sides of the conflict but they're starting to acclimate omega into the group little by little and she's starting to show her usefulness so i just wonder if by the end of this season or this series again we don't know if this is going to go more than one season i hope it only is one season because 16 episodes is quite a bit of episodes but to me i really really liked the expansion of like the idea behind the inhibitor chips and how these things can cause a problem for not only the Bad Batch but also for the Empire and I really love the idea of like the, the, the idea of us seeing the Empire forming little by little in this, in this episode the transition between the Republic and the Empire the clones being decommissioned and because that's something that we didn't really get to see in the Clone Wars show and I remember hearing rumors that by the end we would see it. But that wouldn't make sense because the Clone Wars themselves ended in Revenge of the Sith. So Clone Wars Episode 7 took place parallel to Revenge of the Sith. I'm sorry, Season 7. Parallel to Revenge of the Sith. So unless they do a season like the Aftermath, the Bad Batch is it. And in many ways, the Bad Batch is the Aftermath. So to see the true, complete formation of the Empire, you would have to see the Clone Wars show, like the last couple seasons, Revenge of the Sith, and this. By the time we get to Rebels, the Empire's already been formed. You know, they really have. Obviously, it's still young compared to A New Hope, but still. So what did you think about this episode? I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was my favorite one besides the premiere so far. Episode 2 is the weakest so far, but we'll see where the show goes. Thanks for watching.